Hello, my beautiful friends, Matt's Fitness here. Thank you for watching. This is your 10 week date on this vlog about uh, recovery after double hip replacements. I'm not sure if this will be the last video because there's still a long way into recovery and a lot to share with you guys. So before we get started, do me a favor, make sure you like and subscribe on this video, share it with your friends. It's been wonderful to hear from every single one of you, how just my experience um, has helped some of you through your own challenges, specifically those who have are thinking about or have done um, some sort of hip replacement surgery. So um, coming to you guys right now from Deltona, Florida, I am at my parents' beautiful home. I just finished the Zumba convention and never my wildest dreams uh, a year ago, I would think that I was going to be physically able to go and perform and do my job at this important event. I've been a fitness presenter for Zumba Fitness for almost 14 years now and um, every year I do their convention. I represent and teach um, the toning program for them, which is lightweight resistance with dance. And um, yes, so it was a long shot to see only 10 weeks after surgery if I could go and dance. First thing that I would say is that I was um, released by my surgeon to go ahead and do this. I explained to him exactly what I was gonna do. And uh, it was a challenge physically, but I never felt that I compromised or put myself in any danger. I took a lot of precautions and I also had shout out to the team of people that helped me out on stage. Friends uh, that are instructors, friends that are uh, Zumba jammers and Zumba education specialists that were there for me, literally lending me a hand to balance and to be able to do a lot of the things that I did on stage. So I worked really hard on rehab and that's one of the that's one of the things that kept me um, kept me going and pushing me to do better, to wake up every day, regardless of being tired or just mentally exhausted from the process of recovery. I had something to look forward to, and that was to make it to this event. So I taught a master class. The master class it was the first day. And um, just to give you an idea, it's me dancing with small weights. I did about 50 minutes of the master class. And uh, if you are a dance fitness instructor, I'll say this, working on your skills and my experience um, doing this for a long out, I was able to cue the students, maintain the energy and deliver at, at the level expected for a convention, right? Where people go to learn and the excitement and the energy is up to here. But I rely a lot on my skills and uh, my abilities as, a, as an instructor to lead and have people do everything without me having to do everything. It was very important for me to select the songs and the choreography that um, was safe for me to do, but they had no idea, right? So I had dancers with me on each side, and if there was a movement, for example, I can, I can squat, I can do lunges, but my range of motion is not as big as I would want it to. So I explained that to them in the, in the beginning and just made them go lower than me. Um, my dancers on the side, if there was a part of the song where we had to go really, really hard with the dancing, I will continue doing my version of it while they twerk their little booties off just because I just didn't want to get too excited. So I would feel the energy of the room and still participate, but very conscious of how I was moving my body. So that was great. And then next day we had a, a full day of training where we licensed instructors in the format. And I was very blessed to have another presenter with me. So we divided the materials, which she did a lot of the physical stuff. And I completed most of the lectures, which is my forte and what I love doing as an educator. And that was an amazing experience. I also want to say that it took a lot for me mentally to humble myself down and, and admit to everybody where I was physically and the limitations that I had. Um, and everybody actually truly appreciated my honesty. Some people told me, it's like, if you would not said anything, we would not even notice, but <laughs> trust me, 
when I was walking back, there's like some really long walks that we do to get to places. It's between a hotel in the Hyatt in Orlando to the convention center. And a lot of my sessions were all the way down, which I was like, really? They have to give me like the last room. But I'm just walking there and uh, on my way back, you can certainly see that I was really tired in my legs, the way I walked. I, I, it's not that I was wobbling like before because I do have the mobility to walk normal. It's just my legs felt really, really fatigued and tired. It was like moving two bricks. Um, so I was very conscious of that. I did use um, the day after the master class, um, I because we rehearsed in the morning and then the class went through, I did use my cane to walk on the way back because I didn't want to put a lot of weight on my, uh, specifically, specifically my right hip. Um, my leg felt really stiff, so in between sessions, I made sure I iced my hips, I rested, couldn't party like with everybody else, but I had opportunity also to spend time with friends and that I consider family. And I think that was great for my spirit because um, the year that I spent hiding my condition and not, not making people worry about me or to really reveal how bad it was, it took a toll on my mental health and my relationships with a lot of the people that are important in my life. And I know some of you have struggled with that too. So I was able to just spend some time with friends. The last day was super important for me because I got to present a session where I taught instructors how to lead a class for those who cannot safely dance with weights um, because of limitations, a lot of our seniors that have issues with balance. And um, this was a goal toning chair session. And this is something that I developed about three years ago. And uh, yeah, no, maybe four. Then pandemic hit and our convention got canceled for two years. So I always feel like from up above, there's a purpose behind everything. And God has a plan for me because I certainly could relate much more and understand after my experience and having to rehab and losing the ability to flex my hips and to literally walk um, for quite some time before surgery and then in the process of regaining my mobility and my strength, which is still happening. So that was a very important session dear to my heart and uh, to be able to help instructors and to acknowledge how important it is for these instructors to teach people with limitations, to bring the joy and the happiness of music and dance still while sitting on a chair. It just filled my heart with so much joy. And uh, I know every single instructor that was there has a purpose in life. And I wanted to really acknowledge them and thank them for doing what they do. So we finished up with that session and I completed everything I won't deny it, I was tired. I was um, exhausted from the physical activity, but I don't think it's any different from every year at convention. I'm always tired and the energy is so high and, uh, and it's just really a lot going on for four days. On Saturday, I had a day off. I didn't have any sessions of my own and I participated in one Zumba Gold session, which was low impact dance. I didn't dance the whole session, but it was great to be there because I also want to learn and there's so many talented people there um, providing education. So I wanted to have something for me and my own classes. So that was the whole experience. And uh, at 10 weeks post-op, I also want to make sure that I mention that everybody's different. In my recovery, I'm very aware that has been ahead of the curve of what is expected for someone to have double hip replacements. I know part of it is attributed to my good health and um, being in good shape before coming into surgery. And I wanna emphasize that because I know I've mentioned this to a lot of you. If you've made the decision to have the surgery, continue with healthy habits, doing as much as you can physically. I know pain is a big factor, but your nutrition, your um, changing your workouts, things that you can do, maintaining your upper body strength is going to help you in the long run with your recovery. So 
I'm chilling now here in Deltona, Florida. I'm gonna spend one more day here with my parents and then I head back home, back to work, back to reality. Um, I wanna make sure that I mention again to all of you that if anybody has any questions or um, any encouragement or anything that you feel that you wanna share with me through here to YouTube, make sure you comment, make sure you like this video, make sure you dislike this video, like I said, regardless, the more you click, the more views this is gonna get. So I hope that I can come back to you guys in a few weeks, letting you know how much stronger I am. I am still not doing any lower body strength training. I'm still doing only my physical therapy, but like I mentioned in my video before at eight weeks, I got a routine from my physical therapist that is pretty challenging and I feel, it feels like a workout. Um, some of the exercises that I'm doing right now are still abduction, abduction, squats with support suspended, um, using the suspension of the TRX. Um, I've added some um, hip thrust with no weight, just me. Um, I'm still doing standing hip flexion and step ups. So just by the time that I finish those, um, I'm pretty tired. Um, I decided to continue doing my cardio on the bike because it's where I can add the most resistance and work on my strength of my legs. And I'm getting cardio already from my dance classes, even if it's low impact. So I figured that that is the most beneficial for me right now. So if you have any questions, let me know. I see you guys on the next one. Like, subscribe. Lo quiero.